Hey, what is going on guys? Felix here and in today's video, we are going to talk about how I personally take home 80% margins in the business every single month by delaying our expenses up to 90 days so we can use the money that we save in the business on a month to month basis in order to scale, grow the company and really invest in opportunities that you wouldn't have if you were just paying out expenses in a 30 day basis. So the biggest constraint that I see in a lot of small business owner is every time that they use their credit card to pay a business expense bill, they have 30 days from that time that they paid in order to pay off that credit card without occurring any interest. But the way that I'm able to do it is every time I pay a bill, I have up to 90 days before I pay the expenses on that bill without occurring little to no interest. So I'm going to show you guys a breakdown of not only the process behind it, how you guys can design the process on your own in your small business it really depends on some of the key components that we're going to go over. So without further ado, let's head into the screen and let's get started. So I created this cool document for you guys. Feel free to download it if you guys uh, want to. It's going to be in the description below. So I'm going to make this shareable for everyone. But again, the topic for today is learning kind of like the strategies that I personally use to really optimize my accounts payable. So accounts payable are pretty much invoices, credit card statements, net 30, net 30 accounts that you need to pay to your vendor or to pay off your credit card bills every time you make a purchase, right? So that's the cycle that you have. That's what we call our credit building cycle that we have before it starts occurring some sort of interest. And that ultimately sometimes we eat into your cash flow. And again, what I see as business owners, because every time we pay for our expense, we only have 30 days to make the money back through sales, through upsells, through different opportunities to create more money based on that investment itself. And a lot of times, those kind of delays dependent on a number of factors, right? One being, hey, how long is it gonna take from the time that you, for example, pay a marketing bill? pay for daily ad spend, how long does that take for you to acquire a lead from that lead to turn into a customer to that customer paying for your services itself. So that's what we're going to be exactly diving into. So again, the objective here is to extend payables as long as possible to really maximize your free cash flow for added liquidity so you can fund the growth of the business, streamline some of the processes, reduce costs, enhance service level, and really seize new opportunities as they start coming up, right? So again, a lot of times we see every time you make a purchase on something, every time you pay a bill, the cycle is 30 days. That's the standard cycle. You have 30 days before you pay that bill off Sometimes it might be earlier. It depends on what the credit card billing cycle date is for you. But normally, in most cases, it's going to be 30 days from the time that you make an expense purchase to when you need to pay that off. And a lot of times, the more purchases that you make and not really understanding the turnaround cycle for you to convert a lead to a customer, that might really eat into your cash flow. And that's why towards the end of the month, when you do a cash flow analysis, your net cash flow is pretty much zero or you're operating at a negative, right? So for me personally, it's really understanding those numbers and then kind of like having, you know, designing a process that allow us, you know, instead of 30 days, why don't we delay it to 90 days without occurring any sort of interest? And I'll show you a couple of methods that I personally use, right? So some of the key components here is really understanding what your turnaround time from the time that you acquire a customer or from the time that you pay for marketing, right? And the marketing starts performing, the system starts performing to when the leads come in to when you know, your sales rep reach out to the leads or when you sell that product on a, you know, let's say you operate e-commerce store, how long does it take to convert a lead to a customer is really understanding that turnaround time, right? So for us, personally, we operate as a service-based business. Our turnaround time from a lead to a customer is anywhere between like 14 to 20 days as of right now. So as you can see, if I'm paying $400 per day on leads, I have up to 30 days before I need to make that $400 payment that I made today in order to operate at a positive for the business, right? If I'm able to delay that $400 that I need to pay on a daily basis or that we're currently running for ad spend to 90 days, meaning, you know, if it's October today, I have until January to pay that $400 off. And, you know, let's just say I start making a lot more sales, I'm actually maintaining a lot of the margins in the next three months and I can reinvest that margins and the net free cash flow into the business by growing the team, you know, hiring more employees, 
or doing things in the business that come and move the needles instead of having to pay your you know daily expenses bills and whatnot right so this works accordingly to the stage and the phrase that you're currently in in the business if you're in hyper growth mode I totally recommend this because again, the more money that you have at the end of the month, the more you're able to reinvest in things that are working and really grow the company as compared to, hey, if there's you know a lot of expenses occurring, you need to pay those bills every 30 days, then they really eat into your cash flow and then the money that you have left over, you're probably operating at a negative and you can't really invest that into growth, right? So basically what we do is we track our daily ad spend, right? There's key numbers, specifically for paid media, meaning we advertise on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, or Google ads. We kind of like, you know, track all these numbers and we make sure, hey, how many leads are we getting from these ads that we do daily? How many book calls? We operate as a service business and part of our sales process, every time someone becomes a lead, they need to schedule a call with us. And then our team, you know, we pay our closers anywhere between 10 to 15% of the commission. That also accounts for the expense that you need to pay from the point that you made a sell, right? But in the front end, you're already making that purchase of the daily ad spend that you're pushing out on these campaigns. So from that point on, it starts adding up and you have the next 30 days to make a positive ROI or you're just operating at a net, negative net cash flow for the month. From that point on, what we really pay attention to is our CPA. So CPA is pretty much your cost per acquisition how much money it takes for you to acquire a new customer into the business. So that's what CPA stands for. So knowing that number is very, very important because it kind of like tells you, okay, how much am I willing to pay in terms of marketing costs, advertising costs to acquire a new customer? And let's just say the lifetime value of a customer or the contract or whatever service that you're selling them on is $5,000. If the calculations and the CPA make sense, based on your track record is way less than how much it takes to acquire a customer, then it's pretty much, hey, you can really double down on the ad spend on that. You can, you know, increase ad spend because it's pretty much free money from that point on, if that makes sense. So in this example, if it cost me $4,000 between October 1st to October 11th in terms of ad spend in total, and in return, we close, you know, a total of 40,000 of gross revenue in contracts, right? But we're only able to get 33% of that 40,000 upfront collected on our end. We can use that cash collected money to pay off the 30 day expense. But for me, I wanted to maintain and preserve that, right? I have other costs, additional costs. I have investments that I need to make within the business. And I really want to delay my marketing costs until 90 days after. So it's important to understand, okay, based on the contract that they're on, meaning in order to get the full value of the gross revenue that was closed on today, that contract value is going to take us 90 days to collect that entire 40,000, right? Because right now what we're doing is offering payment plans. So for example, if you sell someone on a $10,000 package, sometimes we offer payment plans of like three months. Up front, they need to pay 33% of that 10,000. And then every 30 days, we receive another 33% leading up to that 10K value on the third month, right? So for me, the biggest expense right now is the marketing cost. It accounts for anywhere between 20 to 25% of monthly gross revenue. So that's a big reason why we can only delay that expense up to 90 days. So the way that it works is number one is really designing the process by leveraging like these 0% introductory credit cards, right? Because these 0% introductory business credit cards offer 12 months of no interest, meaning, hey, if the CPA makes sense for me in terms of how much I'm getting back on return on investment based on each customer that's acquired, and that return on investment is way more 3x or 4x, that's kind of like the metric I like to use, is 3 or 4x more than the advertising cost, that I'm willing to double my ad spend and then really spend a lot more over time because I know by putting $1, I'm getting $3 back. So, you know, for me, I'm 100% confident that if I double the ad spend in this case, I'm gonna get more money in return, right? So that's kind of like the logic behind it. And for me, again, it's to really preserve my cash flow because one of our biggest expense is marketing costs in this case. So let's just say I have a 0% credit card. I use that to pay my ad spend. And let's just say I spend 10,000 per month, but I make, I make $100,000 or I make $20,000 back, right? So that's a 2x ROAS. For every dollar I put in, I get $2 back in this case, right? So what I did 
is I use a 0% interest credit card to pay for my marketing costs, right, for my advertising costs. So every month I'm occurring $10,000 of advertising costs on the 0% business credit card, right? And for me, instead of paying that $10,000 off, because sometimes the turnaround time to convert these convert these leads to a client might take anywhere between 20 to 45 days, I would rather save that additional money that I collected from these clients to invest back into something that's going to really grow the business and I hire more team members, developing better products, etc and then delay my biggest expense, which is marketing costs until 90 days afterwards, right? So every quarter, meaning, hey, these 0% interest credit card, they offer no interest on any of the balances that you occurred for up to 12 months. So what I would do is either wait till the 12 months so you can see I'm collecting all of this money, but the biggest expense I have in the business, I'm delaying that until 12 months while I'm paying sort of interest, I would take that route, right? So that's kind of like the easiest route to take. Another route that I like to take is once I run out of all my 0% credit cards, you know, I use my Amex Business Gold in conjunction with the Amex Plum Business Card, right? So the logic behind the American Express Business Gold Card is every time that you spend a dollar on advertising, whether it's on Facebook or Google, you get 4x points back. So that is the best bang for my buck when it comes to using which credit card to get the most amount of points back for advertising costs. So for a business credit card with American Express, especially the gold card, that card specifically, while it does give me Forex points back for every dollar advertising that was spent, I only have 30 days that I could rack up the balance before I need to make a payment on it. Or else after that 30 days, I'm gonna start making interest on that balance that I haven't paid off. And if you guys don't know, the Amex business card is a charge card. So it occurs anywhere between 20 to 30 percent if you don't pay off the full balance every 30 day cycle what i would do is actually use the amex plum card because the power behind the amex plum business card is that instead of making um the billing cycle 30 days like your typical charge card or credit card that you need to pay off it extends to 60 days instead right so what i would do is i would liquidate funds from my plum business card to pay off my american express business gold card now i'm really shifting the money to a different card which buys me another 60 day before i need to make a balance on the second business credit card which gives me 90 days of net free cash flow on the biggest expense that i would typically need to pay on a month to month basis right so when you do a numbers breakdown let's just say your advertising cost is fifteen thousand dollars a month instead of paying that fifteen thousand dollars every single month out of your business checking account, depending on what your 30 day cash collected is, you're extending that 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 on the third month, 30,000 each quarter, right? Because it's a 90 day period. In this case, I will pay the 30,000 on the third month without incurring any sort of interest. And in the first couple months that I accumulated this $10,000 of expenses, I'm actually preserving it and using that to reinvest in things that are much more important when it comes to scaling the business. So I hope this makes sense to you guys. I know it's pretty in depth in terms of how I break it down and it might be a little bit confusing, but that's why I created this document for you to really better understand this process behind it. And then if you guys have any sort of questions, make sure to comment down below and then I'll make sure to create another video if you guys need a little bit better demonstration of how this method works. Okay, that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.